where Satan gets his power. Have you ever thought anything about where Satan gets his power? Well, that's what we're talking about. We have a very special guest with us all this week on the broadcast, and we're going to discuss it. First of all, I want us to read a scripture, which will be the foundation scripture for what we're talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. The apostle Paul says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, you notice it said that I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, that you'll be deceived. It didn't say because the devil's so great, he's going to deceive you or going to destroy you. Now, we're going to talk about this some, and uh, we have with us Brother Joe Nay, a minister friend of mine from Arlington, Texas, and he's in the full-time ministry. Joe, it's a privilege to have you with us on the broadcast today, in fact, all this week, and we have just finished a meeting in (laughs) Alabama, and uh, the power of God and the Word of God was received there, and it was was great, and I'll tell you, it's a thrill to have you, Joe. Uh, Charles, it's my blessing. I've been looking forward to it since we began to discuss it. And uh, this scripture here, I wanted to read that so it kind of set the stage for what we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. because I remember you shared something in the (laughs) meeting down there about that you were uh, drunk at one point. That's (laughs) right. And you were certainly deceived by Satan. There's no doubt about it. (laughs) Totally. Completely. And you know, Charles, the pathetic thing about that was that I had been a church member all my life. And the fact that uh, you ease into these things and he's so deceptive if you're ignorant to what God says and how he operates, then you're wide open to him. And I certainly was. But I thank God he, he led me out through Jesus Christ. Well, uh, there are many sinners. In fact, I'm sure that this is a true statement that every sinner is deceived by Satan or he That's wouldn't right. be in the situation he's in. That's exactly true. But yet, there are many Christians that are deceived yes. into areas. I think probably one of the greatest areas of deception and where Satan gets his power is because of the person has a lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Totally deceived from what you think the Word says rather than knowing what the Word says. Charles, I can't remember when I didn't know that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. I was taught that all my life. But the fact that it never got into my heart, it was strictly sense knowledge. And I notice here in this verse that it says, so your mind should be corrupt. Your minds, not your hearts. Well, I never had no hard knowledge of Jesus. I had a lot of mental knowledge. And you know, it, it works in an area to deceive you because Satan operates in the mind. He tries right. to blind that mind. He's the God of darkness of the mind, isn't he? And I found myself totally, that's where guilt comes from. That's where all the condemnation comes from. You know in your head what the truth is, but you don't know no heart knowledge about it. Right. And you don't know how to handle it. And that's what drove me into despair totally, completely condemned from every angle in my life until I really met Jesus in my spirit, in my heart, was recreated. Then then things changed. Well, things change when you begin to let the Word become reality. That's right. That's right. Now, when you were drinking and living in the world, you were probably searching for something else. All the time. That's what you was looking for in that bottle, wasn't it? That's exactly right. (laughs) But that bottle won't fulfill what you're seeking. It's still a void there. All it does is just bring a haze over everything. You just can't quite see anything clear. Yeah. And it quenches that condemnation for a few hours. But the first yeah. thing you know, you begin to seek. I believe everybody in the world is seeking God. They just don't know that it's God that they're seeking. Because they're looking for something that will put them across rather than quench everything that they do. I thought that's a success. In business, we were successful. My wife was an accountant. I was a salesman in Dallas for many years and uh, financially. But you know, Satan was stealing that from us. Just hand over fist, whizzing dead up their ears, owed everybody. I remember when I got born again, was called into the ministry. We decided it was so predominant to me that, that this darkness was there. And when I got some of that light, I decided we was going to start us a church. And every time I think about that, we called it the New Testament Baptist Church, Charles, and nobody could join unless they made a public profession of Jesus Christ before us that they were saved. They had to know that they were saved. And, you know, sometimes you think you're operating in wisdom when you're operating in presumption and pure unbelief and doubt. That's what we were doing. Yeah. But God loves you. He, he seeks you where you are, Charles. And that's what he did with us. Yeah. Total darkness. 
I believe that's a key, and, and it's a key that a lot of people have missed, is that God will meet you where you are. That's right. That's right. I mean, as a drunk, God met you. Right, right where I was, where, where I needed help. How did you break free from that deception of Satan that, uh, you know, happiness was in the bottle or yes. happiness was in or whatever you were doing? time or whatever it was or in your job. <laughs> you know, when I heard the truth, when I really heard the truth in my heart, I got to seeking him. I got to put the word in my heart. It took me three months to read the Psalms out of the Matthew Henry commentary. Little did I know then that I was putting that word in my heart because all the time, I studied all the time, read it mm -hmm. to myself, meditated upon it, thought about it. Well, I didn't know that was some of the principles of how to put the word in your heart at that time. But I got enough word in there that I cried out unto God, and he recreated me, what we call being born again spiritually. And that instant, that instant, Charles, Everything changed in my life. I quit drinking just it just like it left me. I had something better. I had something I'd get my teeth in, so to speak. Uh, now, some of those personal habits, I had to renew my mind on. That took a while. I like not ever quit smoking. But, you know, not that I don't beat anybody down because they smoke, but I believe you can feed them something better. And it, and it, was, a, it was a battle. Yeah. But that's what he says, renew your mind, doesn't he? That's it. Your mind's renewed with the Word of God. And, right. uh, you know, so many people are in bondage and the deception of Satan. You know, all through the Bible, Satan is called the deceiver. Mm -hmm. And most Christians, though, get the idea somewhere. I know I did, and I imagine you did, that somewhere down the line we got the idea that Satan had a lot of power somewhere. Yes. Just somehow he had some great supernatural power and that he deceives people into believing that he has all this power and there's no way that you can get out of his clutches. That's right. I think that's a misconception with believers today. Yeah, that he's got all this power. That's right. Because he hadn't. No. You know, every time I think about that, I think about how Jesus took his power away from him. And I liken that unto plucking a chicken. <laughs> I mean, good. when Jesus stripped him, boy, he stripped him right down to the hide. He hadn't got any power except what a believer gives him or an unbeliever. Yeah. You know, you see a lot of good men. There's a lot of good men just missing heaven, just, you know, thinking, well, I never make no mistake. I never cheat nobody. I never drink. I never cuss. I never beat my wife and all those things. But that's not what makes you lost, separated in deceitfulness and darkness and deceiving by the power of Satan. It's strictly you moving out of that light, isn't it? It's letting him do it, whether you're lost or saved. And there's a lot of believers who operate in, in thinking that he's got all that power. But he ain't got no power except what we give him. You know, that is so very true. And I know that there's so many people... And this is what happened to a lot of you right now. You've allowed Satan to deceive you into thinking that he has all the power, and he's convinced so many of you that there's no way to get out of the clutches of Satan. Mm -hmm. You've heard him say it, Joe. That's You've right. said it yourself. That's I right. just can't do this. That's right. I just can't live that way. <laughs> I just can't live like Christians ought to live. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what are they actually saying? They're actually saying, well, Satan's got me so bound, and Satan's so powerful I can't break free from That's it. That's right. Well, now, you see, there's some truth in that. <laughs> Nobody can do it within their self, and you can't do it within yourself. Just as Joel, when he was in a situation where alcohol was his God, he couldn't break free from that until Jesus came into his heart. And then when Jesus came in, you see, that's, that's the key that people have never seen, is that you can't do it within yourself, no but way. thank God Jesus in you can Amen. do it. Amen. And that's what happened. What? You know, I never had the self-confidence until after I was born again. Before that, it was a veneer. It was a put on. Yeah. But when Jesus came in, that's where that cool spirit comes in. You know it's not you, it's him. It's supernatural, that's right. Charles. That's right. Supernatural. That's where we need to move into the fact of the supernatural power of God. And he does that for us. And you know, Joe, uh, people are looking for the supernatural power of God. They're looking for it everywhere. That's Amen. the reason that people are going to the occult and to, right. to all kinds of things now mm -hmm. is the supernatural power of God. And let me tell you, folks, the supernatural power of God is found through the Word of God. God's Word is supernatural right. power. And the things that you say, well, I just can't do, you can't do it within yourself. But thank God I'm not within myself. Are you Joe? That's right. And Jesus That's is with exactly us. Right. Thank God. And I'll tell you, when Jesus gets inside you, you can do all things like the Apostle Paul said. I can do all things <laughs> through Christ. 
So the deception then that Satan has brought against so many of you is that, well, now you can't live this Christian life. No, I'll be the first to tell you, you can't do it. But Jesus in you can do it. And you see, it's not ourselves, it's of God. It's the supernatural power of God. You know, John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundant. <laughs> now, you were one time uh, drunk and yeah. away from God, like most of us have been at times, uh, away from God, and uh, you were deceived. Totally. Uh, you were sharing with me one time about uh, being, de- you thought you were born again, but you wasn't. Deceived by Satan. Tell us about it. I grew up in the church, so to speak. You know, every time the doors were open, we were there. And sometime along the line, I walked that aisle, I don't know how many times, rededicated my life, I don't know how many times, uh, operating under total ignorance of the true Word of God mm-hmm. in my heart. Now, I, I understood some things in my head, but you can have all the heart knowledge in the world. When I really found out that deception was so strong, was when I was about 38 years old, Charles. I went to church one Sunday morning because Joanna, we felt like Phyllis was 12 and she needed to be in church. Mm-hmm. I'd been drunk the night before and Joanne got up the next morning and I got the guilties. <laughs> got up and took a shower and was late and got in late. But this old Baptist preacher was preaching the Word. And it seemed like more he preached, like he had been talking to my wife about me and <laughs> I got the guilties, sure enough. But I got under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That Word began to... So I went home that day after walking down the aisle. I went home that day and got out an old Matthew Henry commentary that we had. It took me three months to read, and it was a psalm is what it was. Mm-hmm. And you know, that tells you all about Jesus, yeah. past, present, future. And I finished that in three months. Night and day I'd study it. As soon as I'd come home from the office, I'd get in that book. Hmm. And I began to see, you know, the Word will reflect what you really are. Yeah. And I got to see in me in there like David. Uh I did everything but cut somebody's throat with a rusty knife. You know, I never killed anybody (laughs) outright. But I got under such conviction one morning about three months later, I just woke up in a king-sized bed, and I just cried out to God. I said, I need some help. And it came from the word that was down in my heart. Hmm. It came from my spirit. And uh, just like that, I was recreated. I really knew what it meant to be delivered from deception. So actually what you had to do then is get enough word in you. That's exactly right. To where you could understand where you were. That's right. Now that's uh, true deception. Yeah. See, I was religious. Mm -hmm. I did some good things. I finally got to the point I couldn't even do it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they taught you how to do the the do's, but never get over into the don'ts. (laughs) And if you're doing that by sense knowledge, you'll always wind up doing the don'ts because you're deceived. Yeah. No heart knowledge. Yeah. Not until I got some word, Charles, did I really find out who Jesus Christ really was. That trying to turn over a new leaf just doesn't work every it time, work. does it? You can turn them over for a lifetime and still go to hell. It takes the supernatural, That's right. recreative power of the Holy Spirit to bring the life of God into your spirit. Now, there's some of you in the same situation, deceived. Many, many, Joe, I'm convinced that many church members. Right that feel like they'd be all right if they die. That's right. They just feel they just feel like they would, but they don't have anything to base that on. That's right. No but they've never evidence. been born again. They just joined the church. That's right. And uh, folks joining church is not going to get it. Now, I don't care how many churches you join or what church you join. It's a matter of being born again and receiving Jesus into your heart and the spirit man being recreated. That's exactly right. And that's what happened to you. It yes. can happen in your bed. It can happen anywhere, <laughs> can't it? <laughs> that's that good bad. news, I'll tell you. When you can say, man, I'm help is on the way anywhere that you get enough of the Word of God into you till you can release your faith in the supernatural yes. power of God. And besides that, He gives you the faith. He does yeah. everything for you. Yeah. All you got to do that is faith, That faith is given to you in God's Word. Yes. It? Yes. And that's where most people are deceived, and this is why they're in the position they are. God filled his word with sufficient faith that's right. to cause a man to be able to operate in the supernatural power of God. But unless he studies that word and gets that word down in him, it won't work for him. Ain't got a chance. Ain't got a chance. He'd be the sharpest man, have all the degrees. I'd been to college. I was among the top five in our company. We were making money. We were doing good. Joanne was an accountant. But we owed everybody. We were in bondage to things. We were in bondage to uh, darkness. We didn't know it was darkness, but we were. <laughs> and when the light shined in, Charles, I saw me as I really was. 
And it was nothing but a veneer, make believe. And it yeah. was shocking. It took some time to change that too. You don't yeah. change that overnight. Yeah, the, the inner man was born again instantly, mm -hmm. but you had to renew your mind and had to bring your body in subjection to the things of God. And there's where the conflict starts. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, mortify the deeds of the body. That's right. And that's something you do, that's not right. something God did for you. That's not easy. <laughs> it's a full-time job, discipline. Yeah. And most, I find myself, I thought I was a disciplined individual, but I wasn't. I thought I was positive, but I wasn't. See, thought comes from the yeah. mind. Yeah. We got to operate from the spirit, hadn't we? That's it. Basically. Yeah. To renew our minds. The word of God in the human spirit creates the most powerful force in the universe. <laughs> it creates a spiritual force called faith. And you see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, the Bible says that, you see. That's right. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. One thing, you can't be born again without it. That's right. And until you've got enough of the Word in your heart to produce that faith, cause that faith to come, without knowing that, you know, and people tell you there's just nothing better, it's all in a bottle. <laughs> and you can be deceived to that. Yes, sir. Highest level of deception there is, making people feel good and thinking they got something when they don't have it. One thing about it, Joe, after you got turned on to the Word, begin to preach the Word and get in the Word of God, this Word of God doesn't leave a hangover, does it? No. You wake up in the morning. <laughs> no, you stay on a high, high all the time and you feel good all the time. You can just overdose. In fact, we tried to down in Alabama oh, sure a few did. days ago, didn't we? Six sessions a day. I'm telling you, six a day now. And I thought, I, I've been in some meetings, Joe, and I thought, man, with Brother Copeland's meeting, we had five a day. But get down there, and you had six a day. Set didn't up. the people enjoy it, though? Preach the Word six times a day, and the people just kept staying and coming. Yeah. Just I, all day long. And we tried to overdose <laughs> on the Word, but you just can't do it, can you? Can't do it. You just can't, <laughs> just do, can't it. do it. And the people sitting out there love it. Yeah. They want it. Hungry. Hungry. They want to get rid of the deception in every area. And you realize this, a lot of people today sitting in churches where they're not getting the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about anybody's church special. I'm, right. I, I'm talking about all churches. There's some churches in all denominations sure. that the people are being fed things that are just simply not the Word of God. Not truth. And uh, they're searching for truth mm -hmm. because Satan has deceived them. Yes. And I'll tell you, there's some of you that have been deceived into thinking that, well, there's nothing to this life. You know, you're just going to struggle along here in this life. And Satan's got you to believe in that he has all the power and that you don't have any. But I want you to know I have good news for you. Amen. The Bible says that there is no power but of God and those that be ordained of God. You remember that scripture, what is it, Romans, the 13th chapter, I believe, verse 1 or 2 says, There is no power but of God and those that be ordained of God. Amen. When you're ordained, that's when you're engrafted into. You become part that's of it. him. Satan's power, Joe, I think you could sum it up like this. The power of Satan comes from his deception. That's right. To deceive people into believing that they can't get out of his clutches. That's right. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Hosea, what is it, 4, 6, mm -hmm. says God's people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Now, you notice it didn't say the devil people. It said God's That's people. Right. So uh, not only are sinners deceived, but God's people are being deceived right. because of a lack of knowledge of the Word of God. You see, what he wants to do is divide and conquer. And you know, long as the devil could keep you out of church, he kept you away from the Word That's of God, right. the very thing that has set you free. That's right. And the guilt is what kept you out. Yeah. That's the highest. Isn't it good to know that God loves the sinner? Yes. And with the it, knowledge you have now, you can understand why the sinners act like they do because they think God's mad at them. That's right. See, if you and I, as ministers of the gospel, if we begin to love people like God loves them and show them that we love them and accept them where they are, you can run them to Jesus, brother. Yeah. But you I go to condemn them, you run them off. I believe that. Condemnation is of the devil. That's right. And as some of you have been condemned and thinking that God's mad at you, but let me tell you, folks, I've got good news. God's not mad at the Amen. sinner. He loves the sinner. Jesus died for the sinner. He died for you, and he wants you to receive him. He wants you to receive his word. And if you will get in the position where you can hear the word of God, go to church, hear the word of God, find a church that's preaching the word of God, not some traditional idea. 
Get in a place where the Word of God's coming forth, and I'll tell you the supernatural power of God will be released in your spirit because the force of faith comes when you hear the Word of God. Without the Word of God, I can tell you for sure there's no hope in this world. But thank God there is hope in God's Word. I want to read a verse of Scripture in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 18, where Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Now I want you to listen very closely to what Jesus said. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. Jesus had it all. <laughs> now, Joe, if Jesus had it all, that didn't leave the devil any, did None. it? I tell you, that thrills me Still. to know that the devil has been stripped of his authority. <laughs> In right. fact, you know, he's streaking there right now. You don't have anything. <laughs> yeah, you got God, I tell you, he's been stripped. The truth? We have Brother Joe Nay with us, who is uh, from Arlington, Texas. And Joe, you've started a church there. Yes, Word of Victory Church. Word of Victory. I like that. Yeah, oh, Word of Victory. Praise God. Actually, Word of Victory is what set me free. It was the yeah. victory in that word, building the concepts of faith, that set yeah. me literally free. And... You know, the Bible says that God will give you the desires of his heart. Now, a lot of men have God to really come in on them after they've been in the ministry a while and say, begin a work here in this area. But my desire was to see people be victorious in the Word of God. And that desire grew until I just knew in my area that people need to hear the truth. So we began the Word of Victory Church right along with Jonah Ministries. And Charles, we've had a tremendous success. We've had uh, an addition about 150 people in the last eight months, and we've just run out of space. And I know there is an area in Arlington where there is our building available to hold the people that are coming. God's moving today. People are hungry. We're excited about the things that's good. That's happening. I tell you, that's exciting when you find a fellow that was deceived by Satan. Till he thought everything was in the bottle, you know, happiness was in the bottle. Then he gets set free from it and gets the word of God. And now he wants to go out and to show other people where they're deceived and out there teaching people how not to be That's deceived. Right. That's right. I you know, that. I find that don't preach about the don'ts, but preach about the do's in the word of God. And people will latch on to it. Don't hey, they? I want you to say that again. Don't say preach it. about the don'ts, but get on those do's. Tell them about Jesus. You know, that's what God continues to tell me. He said, tell them about me. Don't tell them about their faults. Hey, when I was a drunk, there's nobody knew it better than me. I was hunting the way out of that mess, brother, and so isn't everybody else. Every person that's being deceived by Satan is looking for a way out. And it's up to you and I and people like us and the average Christian who's really seeking God to give them something better than what they got. As yeah. soon as a man showed me that he loved me and that God loved me, an old airline pilot there in Arlington, he showed yeah. me that, that he loved me and that God loved me. I latched on to it, Charles, because I didn't think anybody. I thought they was all beating me down. You had enough of that condemnation, that's didn't right. you? So that's my desire in the area where I live, not to compete with nobody. We're not in competition. Just to give them the truth to the best of my understanding of my building and bring people in like you to teach the concepts of faith. That's yeah. what I'm after. You know, this is one of the real strongholds of the devil is to get people under condemnation. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially a sinner and, yes. and our Christians alike. That's right. And get them under condemnation and make them run from God. You know, <laughs> condemnation will make you go away from God, not to Him. When we ought to run right to Him. That's right. And when the devil gets a person under that, then uh, they're in a position where they think God doesn't love them. And that's one of the great deceptions of Satan. And that's where some of you are, that you think because you've done something wrong that God doesn't love you. But I'll tell you, that's Satan's stronghold is to get you under condemnation. Condemnation is of the devil. Now, the Holy Ghost will convict you and convince you of your sin. But thank God Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. Amen. And i tell you, that's good news to a fellow that's under condemnation, that's right. isn't it? That's right. First John 1, 9 has cured the sin problem. Yes, amen. Amen. I'll tell you, that's good. For a long time, I didn't realize it was just especially the believer that it was breaking that fellowship of the Father of God that kept you in an area from getting your victory. And even in the area of man that is lost, as we said many times, God always meets people where they are. If he will the sinner, he will the believer. Yeah. Isn't that right? That's right. I don't care where you are. He wants you to grow in the Word and That's get in it. the Word. But you're going to have to do something, aren't you, Charles? That's you're right. going to have to move toward him regardless of the pressures that are on you. You know, many people don't think ministers like you and I ever have any pressures put on us or <laughs> oppressions put on us. Yeah. Boy, I'm quick to fall down before the Lord 
if I miss him in any area, whether it be sin, deception, or just flat out missed him. I'm quick mm-hmm. to say, Lord, forgive me, according to 1 John 1, 9. Yeah. Get that thing off me and run to him as hard as I can instead of trying to hide from him. That's right. <laughs> that's where <laughs> yeah, Satan gets his authority, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. When people quit running toward Jesus, actually what that is, it pushes us over into an area of selfishness. I can do it by myself. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. That's some of the greatest revelation knowledge and a believer needs. Mm-hmm. That they might as well get that deal out of the way. See, we've been taught that. We're deprogramming people yeah. through the Word of God. Yeah, that's right. I remember an individual one time, Joe, that was, you know, the typical sinner. He drank, first one thing or another. And he came to the Lord and really got born again. And uh, now this is some of the deception of Satan. You see, this man was really born again, mm-hmm. but he had some beer that he kept in his refrigerator and he kept it in there. He said, I want to keep it in there just to prove to myself that I just won't drink it. Now, you know, the Bible says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, too. And, of course, that's not going to tempt God, but it was tempted to him. That's right. He ought to remove temptation. That's right. Now, there was a man that was dependent on his ability to do that. Can't do it. And he sat there and looked at that thing day after day. Every time he opened the refrigerator, and, uh, you know, because it was there before him, because the enemy would come against him, and because he was weak in a moment, he drank that and because he did condemnation got on him like they say you know like ugly on an ape and got him to where he just <laughs> didn't believe that god loved him anymore right. and he just went away from god yes. lost out with god yes. when uh we realize this is satan's deception we have to depend on his power that's right. god's power that's right. god's ability and don't let anything build an image in you other than the word and god why don't you tell us something about uh, joe Nay ministries and uh, you're on some radio station right. now you start on radio at we're, we're starting on the radio broadcasting, and we call it the Word of Victory. We're on six stations now and mm-hmm. adding as time goes by because you know how that grows. Yeah. And then we have Joan A. Ministries, which uh, is the Word of Victory World Outreach, which will be radio, television, plus the church, the Word of Victory. And we're ministering to the needy in Arlington. We have what we call a storehouse, and we store clothes and food and things of this sort, which we think is a tremendous ministry to the people who, a lot of people, Charles, in areas that don't have anything. Mm. So we, we supply a lot of needs in that area. The, people the, the church, church do. is doing that. Yes, right? the church is doing that. It's a ministry within itself. Now, how do you determine where these goods go? Well, whoever wants it, we just give it to anybody. We went down to the food stamp place and put a sign up. And there are just a lot of people come into a town the size of Arlington who don't have anything. And we'll outfit their children and free of charge, and it's not a greater blessing to see. We had an old boy come in the other day who was crippled and who couldn't get a job, who was trying to get one and had a family, and he had probably never had gotten anything from anybody. And we filled his cars up full of groceries and got his wife and clothes and him some trousers and his kids, and and he didn't want to say. He just (laughs) began to cry, and we didn't uh, press him to hear the word. We didn't make him sit down while we preached him a sermon. We just loved him. So our ministry is based on meeting the needs of the people wherever they might be in every concept, in every faction. And uh, the church is actually bringing this stuff and storing it, warehousing it, so to speak, there. And we got two places. Dealing it out to the poor and the needy. Yes. You know, that's what the Bible really teaches, isn't it? Yes, sure is. Is to meet the needs of the people. Yeah, And I'll tell you, with a church name like that, and of course I don't put a lot of, you know, and <laughs> names or denominations. Now this is an denominational church. Right. This is for a church of all faith. A church of all faith. We it's called the Word of Victory. victory. Glory to God. You feed an old like boy, he'd go to believing that. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, he'd go to hunting it. <laughs> I believe it's the biggest thrill. Not only can you feed them, we want to meet them spirit, soul, and body. We want to feed their body. You know, if a man's hungry, it's hard for him to get a hold of something. But if you right. feed him and show him that you love him, yeah, and then just let him make up his own mind where he comes or not, not force him. That's good. You know, I've been in some situations where somebody comes along. See, God will always bring them. Mm-hmm. We don't go out really searching for people. When our office manager started the grocery thing, he just said, now, Lord, we got all these groceries. We need somebody to come by. And first thing you know, somebody came by. Yeah. So see, God puts you in these <laughs> things. He'll open the door, won't he? But the greatest thing is not only feed the fleshly body, but see them begin to feed on the Word. We've had people come into the church and begin to get the truth, and they perk up. You can see them oh, change it. Yeah, yeah. 
Isn't that exciting? Well, I'll tell you, this word will change you. This scripture that we read here, that all power is given to me both in heaven and earth. Now, Jesus said, I have it all. Then he said, go ye. <laughs> now, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, if he had it all, why does he want me to go? <laughs> Well, because he has given this to the church. This is what he's doing. He's given this authority to the church and to the believer. And I'll tell you, when the believers, the churches, begin to do what the Word of God says and take this authority and meet the needs of the people, yes. then we're going to see the results that God said we'd have. That's right. I'll tell you, it's exciting. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Well, we've been talking with Joe Nay of Joe Nay Ministries in uh, Arlington, Texas, and pastor of the Word of Victory. Church. Church. Word yeah. of Victory Church. Yeah. Let me get that right. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about the Word of God here. And Joe, it's just good to have a fellow here. You know, you must have been the guy that the Apostle Paul was talking to <laughs> when he said, Nay, in all these things, we're more than Amen. Conquerors. I received that. I received that. Just a little humor there. Somebody said not much, but just, <laughs> but a, little. just a little. <laughs> I want to read a verse of Scripture today that I'll tell you will quicken your spirit. Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 19, Jesus says, Behold, now he's speaking to the disciples, his followers there. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Isn't it good that he said all the power? Oh. They didn't leave any, did no, it? Just all. I mean, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, what you need to get a hold of as a believer, and if you're not born again, you need to get born again, is the fact that God has given us power. Now, this is under the Old Covenant. Joe, do you realize this is under the Old Covenant? <laughs> yeah, these are spiritually we, dead people. Yeah, and we have a new covenant that's better established on better promises, and these people had authority over the devil. How much more Jesus do you and I have? have? And you see, we're talking about the deception of Satan and where he gets his power. Now, this is where Satan gets his power over people, isn't it? Yes. He comes in and convinces them that they don't have power over him. That's right. That they can't cast him out. That's right. And that's the reason a lot of people in the situation there, they think they just don't have any power. He moves them around like pawns, and that's not true. You know, the scripture that you used yesterday, that Jesus said, I have all the power in heaven and earth and under the earth. And we know that's God's resurrected power, the Holy Spirit. Right. Anointing. Mm -hmm. That's supernatural power. That's what puts us across. Now, when that's we true. begin to move in that, and we can teach this to people, the basis of these truths, like you call the concepts of faith. Well, I like that. And we begin to get that concept built on the inside of us. And the whole spectrum of God's mm -hmm. faith message and yeah. what's available to man and we begin to understand that he said, Behold, I give you the power to tread on serpents, on scorpions. Now, what he's talking about is anything that Satan puts in your way. Mm -hmm. All this deception. All this, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. But I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I don't know how many times as a minister of the gospel, that thought has come across my mind. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, like sitting here on television. Uh, well, I can't do that. Well, I can't, but Jesus can through me. That's right. See, that's the that's key it. to this thing. That's, that's where our power comes from. That gives us an opportunity to push self out of the way and let him do what he wants to do. That's and then it. we become victorious. That's I it. want people to know that, don't you, Charles? They need to know it. And I'll tell you, now we were talking about your church there in Arlington. Isn't it good to minister to people, Joe, and to tell them that they have authority over the devil? Now, in this verse of Scripture, I want to bring this out. I don't know whether you've noticed it or not. But when it says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. The word power there of the enemy means ability. That's right. It does not mean authority. That's right. See, Satan has no authority. <laughs> his power is limited to his deception. Now, when it says, give us power over all the power of the enemy, the power, the word power there is authority. We have authority over the ability of Satan. That's right. Some of you need to get a hold of that because some of you are in a bad situation now because you didn't realize that you have authority over the devil. And you do if you're born again. What I started to say, Joe, was this, and I want you to elaborate on it some that isn't it good to preach this in the church and get people to realize that, hey, the devil can't run over me. That's I right. have authority over That's the right. devil and watch him come alive. Just like somebody reached over and turned a bulb on, on the inside. <laughs> of and they just, 
and they go to moving and they say, you know, you can see the expressions. Well, I've never seen that before. You know, <laughs> I've never seen it. I've but, had them. I've had them sit on the front seat and their mouth just hang, hang open, you know, like that when you when you're saying those things. Remember the little girl up in Birmingham sitting on the front row? Yeah. Every time a truth would pop out, she'd say. <laughs> and I mean, she just lean forward. If that's the anointing of God in this word that's drawing that inward person out. And what you're seeing is reflection in the flesh coming out of that that's spirit. It. Isn't that right? That's it. The reality of it. Now, you said something that I want us to go back to and look at just a little bit. You was talking about when people are in darkness, Satan is that darkness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you stay in darkness long enough, your eyes get adjusted to that. That's right. And you can see. That's right. But, brother, when you come out in the light then, well, you know, you go to squinting your eyes, and, and that's what's happened to a lot of people. Yes. They've been in darkness so long, they don't know the in darkness. They don't grasp it. They don't grasp what it is. But isn't it great when you take the Word of God, and I know this is what's happening there in the Arlington mm -hmm. Word of Victory Church, is you're preaching the Word and what God says about it, and these people that have been depressed and put down all these years because they thought they didn't amount to anything. That's right. They come alive to that, realize I have authority in the name of Jesus to use the name of Jesus. Satan doesn't have any power over me. And then you preach that they're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it changes their whole life. Charles, I've seen people come to church week after week. I mean, successful people. They're success yeah. in the world, but they're not, they're no success in their spiritual realm. And then all of a sudden they begin to see the truth. That light begins to dissipate the darkness what their spirit has been living in. And they begin to see they can be a success in the spirit realm as well as in their fleshly realm, as they are in the business world. Right. And it's exciting to see that they can correlate the both of them together because God wants you to prosper in your business realm as well as spiritual. But then prosperity becomes real, real to them. The darkness dissipates. Satan deceiving them even in their everyday life ceases to be mm -hmm. because they begin to get a hold of these truths. And the light begins to shine for yeah. And his deception and his ability, I like what you said, his power is a, that ability he has. And it's nothing except what is into this world, the darkness of this world. That's it. We're not of this world. That's it. To deceive people into that's all there is. That's right. Now, here's something that I've seen time to before the Spirit of God brought to my remembrance. When people come out of a dark room and to light, sunlight, they begin to, squint their eyes because they can't stand that light. That's and right. therefore, they can't see well when they come That's out right. of that darkness, right. even in the light. They can't see things plainly mm -hmm. until they're in light for a while. Mm -hmm. And that explains to you why that people will come and they'll come that they've never heard anything like the message that you and I are teaching that God wants you to prosper financially. <laughs> and they'll sit under that and they'll squint their eyes <laughs> spiritually, you know, thinking, well, now I don't know about this thing. You know, I just can't hardly see that. But after they sit there a few weeks, they can see it because they're sitting into the light. Their spiritual eyes get adjusted to what the Word says. And more before long, they say, yeah, I can see that. They're getting that concept and, of doubt and unbelief that's it. out of there. They get it out of there. Now, the Apostle Paul said something that I think is a real truth that most churches have missed. He says, awake to righteousness and sin not. Amen. And Joe, I believe this is what has really kept the body of Christ held back in days past, is that they've been preached sin, 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 sin. You're an old sinner. And you know, even Christians, they've been beat over the head with so many rules until the half the time they didn't know whether they saved or not. That's right. Isn't it amazing how people come alive to spiritual things when you preach that they're the righteousness of God? And certainly they ought not sin. But I'll tell you, when a fellow wakes to righteousness, he don't want to say it. That's right. He realizes there's a way out of that mess. You know, when I was raised up, we was preached hellfire and damnation so much and that God's mad at you that I had so much seed planted on the end of me. When I got about 21 years old, I got to trying that stuff out. <laughs> you know, all this adultery, don't be an adulteress, don't drink, don't do this. And, you know, those seeds came up. Yeah. About from 21 to 38, I let my crop come forth. They talked about it so much, you decided you'd get in there and see what it's That's all right. about. Huh? That's right. Well, I didn't have no testimony. See, yeah. <laughs> God help us. Well, now, righteousness, consciousness is what we're talking about. That's right. People need to have, and you need to have, a righteousness consciousness. I'll tell you, if the world had been taught righteousness the way they've been taught sin, 
And I'm talking about preaching sin. Now, I'm against sin. Don't misunderstand me. I'm against it. You ought not sin. But when that's all the people here, they get sin conscious. Isn't that right, Joe? That's exactly and right. And what God wants us to do is become righteousness conscious. When you get righteousness conscious, you get to the point you don't want to sin anymore. And I'll tell you, when I woke up to that fact, what the Apostle Paul said, awake to righteousness and sin not. Well, when I woke to that righteousness, I didn't want to sin anymore. Dissipated. <laughs> the desire for sin left me. That's right. Now, that didn't mean I didn't make any mistakes. No. But I didn't have any desire to do it. Now, see, most people sin because they desire to sin. That's right. But when that righteousness consciousness hits you, you lose the desire for sin. And see, that's the deception of Satan. Satan will even deceive churches and pastors and preachers to preach so much sin consciousness until they lose sight of their righteousness consciousness. Now, certainly, I think there's times that we need to name sin. Yes. But don't dwell on it. People know about sin, and people know what sin is. You don't have to tell them that adultery is sin. They know it's sin. That's right. I tell you, preach them that the righteousness of God is in them. They're looking for a way out of that junk. And righteousness is a way out. Amen. I, I want to read a scripture here, and then I don't want Go you ahead. to tell us some things that have happened in All some right. of your meetings. In Luke, the 10th chapter, we have this verse in verse 9. Jesus said to the people that he appointed 70. There's 70 of these people that he sent out. And listen to what he said to them. Heal the sick that are therein. Well, let's back to verse 8. And in whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now, this was Jesus commissioned to those people that That's he right. anointed and sent out That's under right. the old covenant. That's exactly right. You notice that he said, Heal the sick that are in the cities. Now, we all know that no man is going to heal the sick. Of course, he's talking about by the power of God. Jesus is the healer. That's right. We all recognize that. That's right. But it's amazing how that these things happen and the power of God is manifest when you preach the Word of God. That's right. Joe, I just want you to share some things with us as happened in some of your meetings around the country. Charles, this last three months, we've been obedient to do what God's called us to do. I love to see the Word taught, descriptive. And like you and I was ministering in Birmingham, I like the idea of you coming on and ministering to the people the Word of God, and then maybe a little break or something, and let me exhort the people, because when the Word is planted, that seed is planted, you can begin to exhort people, and the Holy Spirit in that area, that's the power that is here, that's that is going to cause that Word to rise up, and when you begin to exhort them, the Holy Spirit of God, that anointing comes, mm -hmm. and you can expect and anticipate miracles healings to happen right there because God's is Jesus the same day yesterday and forever now when God showed me this to minister this way and uh, I've been wanting to minister with word men because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a word man rather than just teach myself right. and we did this Sam Carr and I did this up in Nebraska I took him along and he taught and I ministered and uh, one man there had been injured in a parachute jump 1944 in World War II Hadn't been able to raise his arm. He busted his back and his arm. His parachute didn't open mm -hmm. and all the way, and he dropped too fast. And it broke his arm and his shoulder where he couldn't raise it up. Well, as Sam taught, I got up and ministered and exhorted on what he said and the things that the Holy Spirit showed me. And the power of God filled that room. God did this. It opens up the door for the Holy Spirit to minister. And when he did, that anointing came upon him where he was sitting. Not for me, but where mm -hmm. he was sitting. Right. And he was healed just instantly. I call that a miracle. Yeah. And when I asked the people who had received from the Lord anything in their physical body come down to the front to testify, he come running in a shock. <laughs> Tears run out of his eyes. And I said, well, what happened? And he had his arms over his head waving them. And he said, the Spirit of God just came on me. And this warmth just saturated my body and said, look here, I'm able to use my arm, which I hadn't been able to use in years. Now, that's basically the ministry that we're in. Yeah. And now these things happen in the audience while yes. the, while they're now maybe you ought to explain just a little bit. You are talking about teaching and ministering about ministering. You are talking right. about ministering by the gifts of the spirit. Right now, that's what I was talking about. The spirit of God comes upon me, Charles, and He begins to tell me what's happening in the audience, and that's a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Maybe a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, discerning the spirits, good and evil, all sandwiched in together. Yeah, 
but I've learned, and God's teaching me. I don't know that I got all this down perfect, but I'm listening to him mm-hmm. and able to yield myself to hear him. Mm-hmm. And I just do what he tells me to do. Sometimes it's so simple, it's unreal. Yeah. And that's what the part of the ministry of the body of Christ that I've been called into, to right. just listen to the Holy Spirit and do exactly at that particular moment what he tells me to do. And if he says somebody's ears are being healed, I speak that. And to call it to their consciousness. I'm surprised, Charles, how many people are sitting in audience, even like on television, as you and I are ministering. The anointing is here. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is with you all the time. That he's ministering to the people and they're being set free, but the Holy Spirit speaks it through a man so they can be conscious of what he's doing. Most people yeah. don't know what's happening That's until right. you walk back and say, has God touched you or something happened in your life? And then they begin to wreck. Well, you know, I'm, that something has happened on the inside of me. <laughs> so miraculous healings happen by the power of the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And he uses you and I in broadcasting stations. does the same thing as you're teaching the Word of God. That Word plants in their heart. But I find as when I minister in exhortation and minister by the leadership of the Holy Spirit with Word ministers, they happen more predominant. Why? Because that seed's planted. Mm -hmm. And the people that have come to these meetings have already got the Word, and Mm -hmm. it just goes to going off like popcorn. Well, that word produces faith in them. That's right. And then that faith reaches out and receives from God. That's right. I've seen this happen in meetings, and sometimes people question this. And I know that there's many people that don't understand the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. That's right. Now, what we're talking about is the word of knowledge. That's right. And the working of miracles, whatever, you know, uh, in 1 Corinthians. That's right. And I know that this happens. And sometimes people say, well, why did it happen when he said it? Well, I'm convinced of this, Joe, that a lot of times it'll never happen unless you say it. That's exactly right. God puts it in your spirit by one of the gifts, a knowledge of what you should speak. That's right. And unless you speak it, it'll never come to pass. But it causes that person to have the faith to believe for it instantly because you sit there and describe exactly the condition they're in and they all of a sudden they say, hey, that's me. (laughs) And the anointing of God hits them because that God spoke it through a man. That's right. That's right. Most people operate in sense knowledge. Now it's changing all along. The Mm -hmm. word's being taught, people learning how to operate. But we've always had this and it is awesome. It is the awesome power of God. I'm not trying to belittle that. But we've always had this outlook like, well, you know, God will do that for me. God's waiting for us to operate in that. And then, too, God called. Jesus said in Ephesians 4, some apostles, some preachers, some prophets, some Mm -hmm. different types of ministry to bring in the unity of the body of Christ and to perfect the body of Christ. All I'm operating in and all you're operating in is the area of Jesus' ministry that he's called you to operate in. See. And that's why we're learning how to coagulate with one another. Mm-hmm. Ministry is no longer in competition. They're there to do a job, Come to go to heal here. the sick. Yeah. Now, let me say this. I think this is one of the most important things that God's getting across the body of Christ today, whether it's miracles or healings or whatever it is. The one thing that we're seeking is to win the people to Jesus. Yeah. A man see a miracle, brother, that'll open his <laughs> eyeballs to the power of God. Isn't that true? That's it. And then he gets, hey, I got to get this word. Somebody has said that healing is the dinner bell <laughs> to the sinner. And it is. Because it meets a need. Now, this is not to say that healing doesn't take place in all ministries. Yeah. But some are specifically operating in that area. And you know, one of Satan's great deceptions of the day is to deceive people is that God doesn't heal today. That's right. That's right. But the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. Anywhere you find Jesus working in a ministry, you find healing. That's right. Anytime that <laughs> word's going for it. But now, you know, there's another area in that. Uh, me and you can go teach the word of God and teach the people about healing, and people receive healings. And then we say, well, take the word and stand on it. And that's a truth. That is a mm-hmm. truth. It works. Whereas also miracles is when God supernaturally sets aside the law of nature and changes something instantly. Now, if I were standing by faith in healing, say that I just said, well, bless God, I'm catching healing. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and I'm standing on it because the word says it's mine. And I got that truth in me and it's coming forth. I planted it. But I wouldn't stay out of the area where there was a miracle ministry either. Mm-hmm. I might walk in that dude and get it right. just like that. Amen. That's it. So we got to get a hold of that. And it's exciting, isn't it, Charles? Oh, I'll tell you, it is. <laughs> it's really now, exciting. We saw some exciting things in Birmingham. That lady, that the little girl had a deaf ear. 
Yeah. And all those years ministering to on that other side, I don't know what all happened over there. I was just, I so zeroed in on what was happening on my side. But there was yeah. a bunch of folks come down, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And I believe every one of them received before they got down there, Charles, yeah. it, that the power of God just began to show you and I what to do. Amen. That's it. Through the Word. It's amazing that some people have been taught, Joe, that the healing went out with the apostles. I was. But now listen to this. Jesus said here, he said, heal the sick that are therein, say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Now, do you ever get a hold of this? He said they got healed. They get healed if the kingdom of God just gets close to them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, now, the kingdom of God hadn't That's... come at that time. <laughs> it just got close to them. And the kingdom of God is within every Amen. believer. The kingdom of God is in you if you're a believer. And these folks would get healed if the kingdom of God just got close to them. <laughs> I, I you, like that. Boy, I tell you, that's strong. And that will get you healed. Well, healing is for today. Sure is. And the devil's great deception in his power is to get people not to believe that. That's right. And to believe and put that off to the afterlife. Yeah, well, surely he'll minister to somebody, but he won't to me. Yeah, yeah. Thank God we're past that. I tell you, that's thrilling to see God yeah. move in these meetings like that. Well, Joe, it's been a privilege to have you on our broadcast all oh, this week. Blessing. And I believe we've said some things that have helped a lot of people Amen. get their heads screwed on straight, <laughs> you know. I tell you, it helps, folks, when you get your head screwed on straight and begin to think like what the Bible says. Don't let Satan deceive you. Get a hold of God's Word and just say, Bless be God, I'm going to do what the Word says, and I'm going to get the results the Word said I'd have. I don't care if they said healing went out the apostles. It didn't. <laughs> Jesus is still in the healing business. He does it through men by the anointing of God, preaching of the Word of God. 